Okay. So this is the last video in the series. Uh, this is going to be in reference to a company filing a Form S-1. Uh, so we're going to jump right into it and try to keep this video very, very short. Uh, so that, and, and we're going to keep it very simple. I'm not going to go too far of a deep dive into this. If people have questions, please, by all means, uh, as always, uh, reach out to us and we can answer them uh, in depth. And we'll put it on the thread for everyone to uh, see as far as social media is concerned. Okay, so Form S-1 is a registration statement. So you're registering a block of shares or several blocks of shares, depending on common preferred series, et cetera, to uh, be used specifically for the purposes of a capital raise. Now, for us, this is going to be on an institutional level. When you look at some of the previous companies, you know, big companies that many are familiar with, like Facebook, that, that was done through a brokerage house or an investment firm, and then they disseminated to their uh, to their clients uh, and and sold to their clients. So that that's one way you can get to the retail investor. But for us, we're sticking primarily with institutional investing. So the registration statement is going, or Form S one is going to be in multiple parts. There's usually two parts to it. The first part's going to have you know use of proceeds in there. Is going to be it will also outline the, the specific block that they're uh, registering for the purposes of raise the business plan, the investment prospectus that will out, outline some guidance uh, and some some potential revenues based off of the execution of that business model. Uh, share price and structure is an, is another one that will be in that uh, prospectus, and that share price and structure will be based off of the launch, and then there'll be some guidance and projections. Uh, in there. And you also will include some uh, <clears throat> plan dilution. So any insiders or, or debt conversions would be outlined uh, in that, for, in that uh, first part. Now, the, the second portion of that, <clears throat> as many are familiar with us, are the audited financials, right? So a lot of the S1 for us is already drafted through Culhan Meadows and BF Borges is doing our audits currently. So you would, you would include the uh, audited financials in the that second part that uh, uh, within Edgar that you file as well, and then you'll also have a an organizational chart and any planned expansion thereof. So that'll all be included in your S one, and that is that is done so that the institutions can going to uh, that are going to take a look at your particular uh, company as an investment for their clients can evaluate it and have time to come back with any comments that they have when they're dealing directly with the company. There has to be a full disclosure. It's why you've seen a big change with what we've done this year, trying to be as transparent as possible uh, in, in keeping with what those standards are. Even though we're not there, we're, we're in exercise to uh, be as transparent as possible now so we have that habit uh, moving forward. So the um, part of the the purpose of uh, an S-1 is to make sure that when an institution comes in, any retail that they do, they are able to protect based off of very diligent due diligence, a very comprehensive due diligence, I should say, that they can really vet the company as an investment for their client's uh, capital. And that's going to uh, include disclosure on management, the, any insider holdings, uh, any uh, independent directors that may have relationships on a professional level or even family ties or, or et cetera that have any relationships with insiders. So if you have an independent director that has a business and the public company is doing business with that particular company, we have to be able to not only validate that relationship to make sure that it's on the up and up, but we want to make sure that the priority of protecting the shareholders is kept at the top as opposed to the interest of a third party, outside party, via an inside relationship uh, being taken advantage of. And that's what we're, we're in the middle of disclosing. Luckily for us, we don't really have those relationships where an independent director would come on board and then there's an outside business. Most of the, the outside businesses that we did have, uh, we, we still have more, but they're not, they wouldn't be on the board. Most of the people that, or most of those companies that we had those relationships with where we'd be interested in having them on the board, we've already acquired with a few others down the road that we're taking a look at. So that's not going to affect us, but it's important to know that what's in, what's in the S1. <clears throat> so something else that we need to take a look at, because this might happen to us, there's, there's a probability of it, only because you're looking at a public company, 
uh, that's filing an S-1 with five subsidiaries. So there's a lot of audited financials, two years each for each company. And there may be something called a Form S-1A. So we may have amendments. The A stands for amendments. So they're going to come back with comments. They always do. The SEC always comes back with comments. And then we're going to have to answer that. So they may, they, there may be some required amendments to the S-1 that, that are needed. And then you just file the amendment. And that's why you'd see it change to a Form S-1A. I just want to address that now ahead of time so that people are aware of what's potentially and in more probability likely going to happen. Okay. Now this is fi filed through um, the um, electronic uh, uh, services of Edgar. Okay. And Edgar is a filing service that the, you load your, your files to and as the SEC has access to and, and pulls down. So when, when you see some, someone or hear someone say they're Edgarized, all that really means is that they, they were, they opened up the account with Edgar and they've uploaded uh, those files. Then there's a little more nuance to that. There's a little more details to that, but I don't think we need to get into that here. I want to keep it very, very simple. If you have questions about that process, uh, put it on Twitter and we'll make sure that we get those answers to you uh, and for everyone to read, because you might not be the only one that has that a question, but for, for this purpose, I want to keep it uh, simple. So we're going to file a form ID uh, that will give us the um, essentially just an application for access to Edgar. Uh, once we get that ID number, uh, then we will go ahead and do the um, central index key or CIK, and then we start uploading. It's really that simple. Uh, and there, you also have to pay fees, right? There's a fee for everything when you're running a public company. That that includes, the, that that is the entire process. Now, that is oversimplified. It takes a little while. There's some time associated with that. SEC says they're running three to four months on an S1. You know, we'll see how that goes. I don't know that that includes a company with this many subsidiaries. We do have audited financials for all of them, or we will have audited financials. They're in the process of wrapping that up. Tom right now is uh, finishing up Q3 so that we can uh, move forward with the audits and have everything done by the end of the year. Now, why does a company file an S1? And I'm going to wrap this up very quickly. It's strictly to register shares to raise capital. For us, it'll be at an institutional level, and there'll be some restrictions uh, placed on that uh, block so that we make sure that we're prioritizing the stability of the stock as an investment while still capitalizing the company for operations. And this will help us move uh, towards a posture of being able to uplist to a senior exchange. People have asked, are we going to go QB? I'm already in uh, contact with OTC in reference to the potential of doing that. I think we very well may. It's more of a timing for us. Uh, obviously, we've discussed Reg A and S1. So there's a lot of variables that are coming into play, but we will get it done and then we'll make an assessment on whether it makes sense to co go QB before we uh, uplist further. If it does make sense, we're going we're gonna to do it, especially if that provides some level of com uh, comfort or stability uh, to not only the stock, but to our existing shareholders or even potential uh, new shareholders. So I hope this was helpful. Any other questions, please feel free. Do not hesitate. Uh, give us a call or uh, sending some questions. We'll get right back to you. I got to run to a meeting, so I'm sorry I made this super quick, but I hope this was helpful. Thank you, and I look forward to talking to you next time. Potentially, we're going to have an update on Friday. I will let you know, or I'll have Candace let you know on social media if that's going to be the case. Thank you.